Well, hello there. This is Sandy Alnock. And if you are seeing this video, then it unfortunately means that my mom is now in heaven. She's been sick for a long time. I've talked about her in some previous videos. Went to visit her a couple of times in the last couple of years. And I made this video ahead, knowing that this day was going to come. It is not here at the time that I am recording it so that I can get through it. I just know that I won't be able to once my mama is gone. But she always loved art supplies. And since I have this set of Derwent pencils, light fast pencils, it's their highest line and uh, premium pencils, I thought I'd get them and use them, baptize them on a drawing in honor of my mom. As mom was an artist her whole life, she didn't work in pencil, but she worked in a lot of other mediums. And I think I got my love for all the things from mom because she liked to work in different mediums as well. And I did a special drawing that has a bit of a special meaning. I can't wait to frame it and hang it in my house. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how I did this, give you some of the pointers that I uh, used for techniques along the way and tell you a little about the pencils. So shall we do this? So the paper I'll be using is pastel mat, which is made for pastel, but it works great for colored pencils too. And each pad comes with a number of colors in it. And you might think, I don't want to use my colored pencils on that. Well, I'm going to show you what you can do if you use colored papers. And I'm going to choose this reddish one for the, um, the deer that I'm going to do, just so I can have some of that reddish color come through when I do the pencil on top. So the original photos that I used for my reference, there were several of them um, by Tam Tam at Paint My Photo. One had the mama's head down, the other had the baby's head up. So I put the two of them together, kind of snugged them closer together as well since I was sketching. And you got to see the face on this fawn. <laughs> that is so much like me. So if this is me and mom, then that is totally me. Always the one that everybody had to wait for to stop making faces before they could take the photo. Yes, I've always been a little bit on the sassy side. Well, these light fast pencils I purchased because of my friend, Helen Carter. She's an artist in the UK and she does amazing colored pencil work. I just love her illustrations. And I was talking with her on threads and I asked her for the difference between the different Derwent pencils. Could she just give me the quick skinny on it. And it was so great to hear that from a professional artist like her, you know, rather than I like this or I like that. She told me like what each pencil brand or pencil line that they have does, which is great. Those will be posted on my blog for you. But then uh, she said the light fast ones were definitely best. And I want one set of pencils in my studio that is just fully light fast. Because all the other pencils I have, if you look at their charts, the light fastness kind of goes up and down for different colors. And these are all light fast. There's a hundred colors in the set. And there will be a hex chart eventually, don't worry. Um, one of the reasons that I chose a deer for the subject for this, by the way, is because when I was visiting mom last September, and we were just, we had so many art conversations during that visit. It was just mom and me. And I asked all the questions about art that I had never asked her before. It was just so great. And we, we just bonded in ways that we never had before throughout our lives. And it was just wonderful. But I asked her, like, if there was one piece of art she remembered that I did, what would it be? And she said it was this deer drawing that I did. I did it. I think it was my... Oh gosh, was it my freshman or sophomore year of college? I worked on it in my room at college, in my dorm room, because I had this idea that if I drew something really big, it would be quote unquote art. Because everything I had done before college, it was all small stuff. And even in college, I was doing things that were not giant. So I did one drawing and it was stippled and it was a deer. It was a, a big buck that had 
antlers on them and everything. And it was not the greatest drawing ever, but it took me so long to do. The stippling wasn't done with a tiny pen, but it was still stippling and it was painful. And mom told me that she and dad had fought over it when they split up and dad won. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it after dad passed because, you know, her, his place was cleaned out and I don't know what happened. It's probably in a Goodwill still somewhere in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So if you see a stippled drawing <laughs> of a deer, that would be me anyway. So I thought a deer would be a good subject for this drawing and especially if I could you know, figure out how to do a mama and baby because I want to hang this up here in my studio. So layering, 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 layering. This thing took probably three days or so to get finished. It took quite a bit of time. I took my time with the layering. It is sped up here of course but I didn't want to end up getting anything so thick that I couldn't rework it and couldn't add more color to it but what I found which was amazing was that no matter how much light I put down I could put dark over it and how much dark I put down I could put lights over it I don't know of any pencils that I've ever used that don't have a point you reach in relatively short order where it just it hits its saturation point and you just can't go over things anymore I I don't know how they do it. It's like magic, but I will take it because I like magic that helps me in my art. Some of these areas, you know, like the back of the the adult deer's um, neck, that whole big, long, dark, purplish, bluish color, that was so many layers and took so long and not once did I hit resistance. And you can even erase this pencil as well. You can remove some of it. So it, it just has a lot of flexibility that I haven't experienced in my my beloved Prismacolors and Polychromos. And even the Museum Aquarelle seemed to hit a saturation point at some point. They, they just, you know, gets to be so much pencil that it just can't handle it anymore. And this was kind of a unique experience. So I was pretty pleased with that because it's always good to be able to rework because I am forever reworking. Now, as I was working through this, I wanted to make the whole scene more intimate than what the photos had in it. And I wanted to have some, you know, forest behind them, but I wanted to close everything in more. So it just felt like they were in the forest, not just in this bright green open type of area. So I added shadows on the back of the dough. And I just did that right over the color that was there, you know, blues and purples, mixing those colors, adding back in some of the openings where the dappled light was coming through. And, you know, using light layers, I could just rework and rework and rework and rework, and it came out great. Now, the part I'm working on on the right-hand side is the same thing I did on the left-hand side. I'll show you how I did that. Started by just scribbling colors in and not really heavily, just putting a bunch of color in to cover the whole area. And once, you know, and this is like blues, greens, purples, all different kinds of colors. And then I took some isopropyl alcohol on a cotton ball and just mushed the color around a bit. And this, you know, kind of, if you have any pencils, you can do this with other brands too. Pencils that, you know, kind of wreck the surface, you, you end up hitting that point where you can't do anything to it well you can rework on top of this once it's completely dry and it basically restores the surface of the, the pastel mat again so it's like you're drawing on blank paper but now you have all this color to work with underneath of it so I could use really light 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 layers just barely touching the paper and add more on top of it and add the lights and the brights so I have lights and brights on the lower left and upper right. So I have a streak almost of sunshine that trails from, you know, the two corners of the background as well as across the two figures. And then when it came to doing final touches on the deer, I added some darks, finally some, some real black blacks in a few areas. I try not to use the black until I really need it. But I, you know, tightened up a couple of areas, added some texture into the neck, um, kept going back to adding, adding more in the background 
because it was just fun. Um, but as I started thinking about the symbolism in the two animal figures, I wanted the mama to start to fade. Not that I want my mom to fade, but I wanted to create a difference between these two as they're interacting. So first I brightened up the spots on the fawn because the fawn is what the mama is pushing forward out into the world. You know, your time is coming and mine is fading. So, you know, I, I kept a lot of focus on mom by making her face be the place where the lightest lights are next to the darkest darks. And I wanted to, to, to keep some attention on her, but I wanted more of her body to start to fade as, you know, she's, she's sending her little fawn off on her own. This is making me sad even just thinking about it while talking about it, but it was what I was thinking. So around her, the edges of her body, I matched or, you know, got closer together some of the values around the edges of her body so it would start to fade into the background. And it really helped the dappled light to look like it was coming and going across the outside of her body. And then even use some purples to start to dull down and put into more shadow the areas that are back behind the fawn. So that's kind of what I feel like mom has done for me. She trained me up. She set me on my feet, said, go get them. And yeah, that's what I plan on doing. I'm going to go get them. If you were to ask my mom today for advice on being an artist, she would tell you what she told me, especially last September when I was with her. She said, just keep learning, keep growing. You're never too old to learn. She got her art degree when she was 71 and she kept working her, the rest of her life. She won an award last year. So uh, please do keep learning. She would tell you to go take more of my classes because that's my mom. She's my promoter. But I'll put a link there just in case you want to listen to her. But you can also just continue to grow, continue to learn. Now, I have some content coming for the next, I don't know how many videos, but I'm working on stuff all summer so that I can take a few weeks off from at least producing new content. And uh, yeah, I'll eventually be back with some fresh stuff, but for a little while, it's just going to be some things I was working on over the summer. I'll see you later.